DDR3 is one of the latest generation of chips. And DDR3, just like you would expect from DDR to DDR2 to DDR3, we're doubling the rate again. We're, this is twice the rate of DDR2. There are some larger chip capacities, too. We need more and more memory in our systems these days. And so DDR3 allows us to have really, really large capacities on these memories. We're going to take the same formula. We're going to assume that it's a 100 megahertz memory clock rate. And for you purists out there, it's very rare on our latest computers that a DDR3 system would have a clock rate of 100 megahertz for its memory. Probably the same for DDR2. I used 100 megahertz just because it was easy to calculate. And we're going to do other calculations as we go through through here with different clock rates. But you're often given the question, if the clock rate is this value and it's DDR3 memory, what is the peak data rate? Or what is the, the memory you would expect to see described as? So let's say that you've given that question. Let's say the memory clock rate is 100 megahertz. Because it's DDR3, where we've doubled the data rate of DDR2, our bus clock multiplier goes up to 4. This is also dual rate DDR. We've got 64 bits that are transferred in every clock. And it's 8 bits per byte. So everything else stays the same. The only thing that's changed is that bus clock multiplier. So now if I calculate it out, it's 51,200 divided by 8, which means my peak data rate for this DDR3 is 6,400 megabytes per second. And I would see it described on the package as a PC3-6400. So use these rates again. Do some tests yourself. Go through and calculate these differently. Calculate DDR. DDR2 and DDR3, see what numbers you get. And you can expect that on your exam, you might get a question about if you have this data rate and it's DDR3, what would you expect to see this memory described as? Oh, it'd be PC3-6400. And you can choose the right answer. When you saw that DDR and DDR2 and DDR3 chips come out, you, we were looking at our screen. They looked very similar to each other. One of the things that's important to remember is we just can't interchange these things on our motherboards. Motherboards are designed for a certain type of memory. You cannot put DDR3 memory in a motherboard that's designed for DDR2. So if you look at the memory modules themselves, you'll notice that this has already been thought about because they look similar, but they really aren't. There's this little notch right in the middle of the different memory modules. DDR has the notch here. DDR2, it's over a little bit to the left. DDR3 puts it way over to the left, which means that if you show up with some memory that was for the wrong type for the motherboard, you try to put it in, you'll notice it doesn't match. It won't fit in there. So fortunately, we've made sure that you're not going to put the wrong type of memory in. And that's just going to help you later on down the line. If you do show up in a motherboard and you're trying to fit it in there and it doesn't fit, you may indeed be trying to fit a different kind of memory. It might be a DDR2 motherboard and you're trying to fit DDR memory into it. And you'll know at that point you'll need to step back and try to find memory that's appropriate for the motherboard you're plugging into. Let's review what we may have learned about our memory types. Our first question is, what type of memory cannot be changed? Well, I know I can have memory that I can read and write to. But if I can't change it, it must be read-only memory. Here's another question. What formula can be used to calculate memory speed? So this is the formula you need to memorize to take with you on the exam. So if you remember that the memory clock rate times the bus clock multiplier, and that's the one that's going to be 1, 2, or 4, depending on whether you're DDR, DDR2, or DDR3, times 2, times 64, and divide it by 8. And that's the answer you'll need on every single memory speed question you might run across. And what type of memory is very fast, but very expensive, and takes a lot of space? Well, we aren't using this all over our computer, only in certain areas, perhaps in the cache memory for our processors. That would be static RAM. Well, that's giving you the information you need to be able to get through this requirement of your 701 exam, section 1.6, where we've gone through all types of memory, some of the things you should know about calculating the amount of throughput available, the data rates for those different memory modules. If you'd like to watch any of our other videos, participate in our message board, send me an email, or much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.